Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh and welcome to another fresh episode of Ramadan TV. Today, I have a special guest coming all the way down from USA to be with us on Ramadan TV. He's a special guest. I'm sure you know him. He's been in a movie that most of you might have seen. He's been in an act with Jackie Chan, Chris Tucker, and probably by now I've given it all away and you know who I'm talking about. It's my man and my brother, Omar Regan. Omar yeah. Regan, welcome to the show. Well, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. How you doing, brother Ali? Alhamdulillah, how are you? Alhamdulillah, man, how's Ramadan? Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah, we're on the Ramadan TV. That's right, we're on Thank Ramadan. Thank you for having me. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. We, are, we are delighted to have you with us. I'm so grateful. Man, I'm delighted to be with you too. Exactly. You guys are amazing. Exactly. You enjoying your stay in Australia? I am, man. Australia, subhanAllah. You guys, if you haven't been to Australia, you're missing out. Like, subhanAllah, it's beautiful, man. I love it, man. And I believe this is your second trip here. Alhamdulillah. You're enjoying it. I like it a lot. I connect with the, you know, the best thing, subhanAllah, is that you, we, to be able to connect with Muslims from all around the world, it's just so humbling. I'm really grateful to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Okay. It feels good. And, and it feels like I know you. Like, you know what I mean? Like, when you come, we, we don't have to start from the beginning, beginning. It feels like I already know you. The ice has already been broken. I'm already comfortable. Alhamdulillah, mashallah. And that's what you call brotherhood in Islam. SubhanAllah, no matter where you go, you meet a brother, it's like you know each other. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. Oh, I like you rhyme. You meet a brother, it's like you know each other. That's it. That's it. I got it from you. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Back and forth. Alhamdulillah. 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 Now, you came in last time. It was after your big, um, I guess, big breakthrough when we had the big story about from Hollywood to Hajj. MashaAllah. And that was quite <laughs> big and subhanAllah, it was, it was really good to have you with us here in Australia Alhamdulillah. to share a bit of that story. Now, some people were unfortunate to hear that. Mm. Uh, what I want to know and what I would like to kind of to deliver to the people to, so they can get a bit of a taste of that. Yes. Can we say that was like the, a breaking, a move or something that happened that shifted you from that life to this life? Alhamdulillah, you can, honestly, it really did. It did shift me. It was, a, it was a big breaking point. It was more like realizing because I wanted to be like the first Muslim in Hollywood to actually say, La ilaha illallah, while I'm accepting a reward. But alhamdulillah, I'm grateful that I realized that we don't need Hollywood, that we can build our own. So alhamdulillah, once for Hajj, went for Hajj, and I see all of these Muslims, I said, man, you know what, man? This is a billion, so, so many Muslims, man. And it just, it, and at Hajj, you connect. And then, alhamdulillah, they interviewed me on the Al Jazeera. Yes, and, right, yeah. And then, um, subhanAllah, they allowed me to just be myself. Good. And with that, man, it was really humbling, alhamdulillah. And then it just took my career into a whole nother different area where I only committed to entertaining with Muslims my own kind as opposed to entertaining everybody else at the same time. And it, it was like I wanted all of my art, everything that I do, to just really solely be Allah first, Muslims next, and then the general population. So it, I started a mission like that. And alhamdulillah, I'm really grateful that it brought me here to the Aussie, Aussie, Aussie. Oi, oi, oi. You love it. You love it. That's great. That's great. And you know, when, when you say that story, it kind of really it reminds me of Malcolm X. Do you know, when you, hear, when you hear that people, when they go to Hajj, it kind of shifts their life. You find that when, you, when you're there and you kind of step in the places and you, you feel the history and you feel the taste of Hajj yeah. and seeing that big number of Muslims uniting in one place under one testimony that La ilaha illallah Muhammad Rasulullah and obeying with full, full submission. Yes. When the Adhan is called and when the Iqam is called, that's it. People just submit. You hear 4,000 people go silent. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. And I guess that could have been something that played a big part of Man. the changeover that you it had. Is, it is, it's huge. You can't even, and it's kind of like you can't, you try to explain in words. But it's really difficult to explain in words. So if, if anybody haven't been there, even the youth, I encourage them, man, subhanAllah, you go for Hajj. Because sometimes people think that, oh, I'm not ready. I got I to gotta get more on my deen, more on my salat. I'm not ready yet. 
I tell you, don't listen to that. That is a distraction because Allah, if Allah invites you and you've been chosen, you have the desire to go, do not think twice. Man, just say Bismillah, oh Allah, mm -hmm. I want to go. Bless me to be able to go because only Shaykhan plants these ideas in people's minds that now when you come from Hajj, you have to be a Sheikh. <laughs> they think you have to be a scholar. Mashallah, Mashallah. But no, you want that spiritual connection with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala everywhere and whoever you are as an individual. And I'm really grateful that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is so humbling, man. I, I have to go back. I'm addicted yeah, to it yeah. now. I'm like, I gotta go to Umrah. You know, I guess you are right because people do get addicted to it. Yes. I'm one of those people that went once and the following year I went again. Yeah. So it's, it is like that. You kind of get addicted to it because it's so sweet, the taste oh, of it being there. Man. May Allah grant everybody this I mean, amazing, amazing I mean, experience. Especially, especially on the Ramadan TV, make the dua say, I mean. I mean. <laughs> feel good. Man, it feels good. Yeah. Alhamdulillah. Alhamdulillah. You went there. It was a life-changing experience for you and then you came back and especially after that interview that I had on Al Jazeera yes. you now kind of shifted you slowly slowly away from the Hollywood now into a whole new concept where yes. you basically like what you said the full concept of first Allah then the Muslims and then everybody else yes can we say that being in Hollywood is not as contenting as people think Oh man, you can say that. That's true. <laughs> it's not. I mean, you can just look at it like you don't have to take my word for it. All you have to do is just pay attention. You have top Hollywood people, man. I feel bad for them. It touches me because we care about everybody. Like Philip Seymour Hoffman, he commits suicide. Like and Robin Williams, man. How many people we like this guy, man? He commits suicide. And I understand why the pressures that we go through, the, these pressures and the stress that we put up on ourselves. It doesn't matter how much money you have. It doesn't have, matter how much fame you have. But if you, if you lack that spiritual connection with your creator, see, that's the essence, the source of all existence. Like we all are created from one God. And so is the sun, so is the moon, so is the earth and everything around it. And when you don't have that connection or when you're distracted away from that connection, the source of your existence, then that's what makes you get, you feel like you're lacking something and you still be searching for something. And unfortunately, Hollywood is a big distraction from that. You really have to be strong because they only promote you to be glamorous and to be fame in front of everybody else and all of this love. But the real love comes from the Lord above. And the real love is just genuine, where nobody wants anything from you. They just love you just because. And we can get back to that and start expressing that between each other, all walks of life, That's right, all yeah. walks of life. Then we would stay fulfilled. And, and you, in saying that, I'm trying to just picture, you know, people in Hajj moving to do different pillars of the Hajj, different parts of the Hajj. Hmm. And the person that's next to you, he's wearing, he's, he's wrapped in white, and yeah. you don't really know what's underneath that person. Right. Is he a millionaire? Is he somebody that has nothing? That's true. So when you have things like this in Islam that really makes people kind of understand that this cannot be just a normal thing. This, is, this yeah. is from the Creator saying that no matter how much wealth you have, how much fame you have, yeah. you cannot find the full contentment inside it's true. if you don't have the Iman. Yeah, because that's that's a big part of this, a big part of the human being, I guess, and everything, I guess. Yeah, man, it is. And that's why you know now we're seeing you, and especially nowadays we're hearing about halali wood that's coming <laughs> up and yes. everything, else, and really putting the real picture of Muslims out there, so people can understand what actually Islam is. Right. I guess because where are they getting their information from? I guess you know the non-Muslim yeah. right now. Where are they getting their information from? Well, unfortunately. And uh, to be honest, a lot of, they're getting a lot of their information from Muslims. Uh -oh. yeah. Oopsie! <laughs> Oopsie. <laughs> I'll be honest, man. Guys, look, there's a big difference between Islam and Muslims. True. And sometimes we, Muslims, we make a lot of mistakes and we give off the, uh, the, we give a poor representation of Islam. And we have to make sure that we recognize that we are representatives of Allah first, representatives of Islam, so that we have to watch our actions and we have to really be mindful of ourselves, because 
We, I mean, what you see on the news now, Muslims fighting Muslims, Muslims always arguing with Muslims. This is the reason why, I mean, to be honest with you, Ali, I'm gonna be, be, I, I just be honest to with truth. me. You and me oh, tell oh. you the truth. I believe that people call Muslims terrorists because Muslims terrorize Muslims. And that's a problem. And we have to get back to Islam because Islam, oh my goodness, the Prophet cared about everybody. He cared about the people who killed his family. He cared about the people who kicked him out of his home. And we don't even show each other that kind of care inside of the masjid. We don't even show that kind of care to our neighbors who may be not Muslim. Man, and I, it's so ironic because in the Ottoman Empire, like throughout the history of Islam, there was Christians, there was Jews, there were all the people living in the same area for years and years and years and years following the character and the mannerisms of the Prophet Sallallahu And that's what a lot of us have lost. Like, even myself, I, had to, I, like, I be tripping sometimes. I make mistakes. And I have to ask myself, like, man, would the Prophet Sallallahu respond in that way just because I'm upset, just because I disagree, just because I'm having a bad day, um, just because I have my ego has taken over me. You know what I mean? I don't want to seem like I'm soft. And so then I react or I mistreat someone. But the Prophet وسلم, always cared about how he would make someone feel, not offending anybody. I mean, not anybody. And unfortunately, Muslims think that this Muslim or this Islam is just between Muslims. But it's not. This Islam is for everybody. Especially here when you have a big responsibility, when people, when Islam is being so portrayed in a bad way on TV. Yeah. So you kind of imagine a non-Muslim not knowing anything about Islam and you're a Muslim, he's looking at you trying to really find out what Islam is. Right. So you kind of, you're the ambassador of Islam. Yeah. And anything that you do, pretty much, yeah. it can determine for that person really taking it as yeah. good or as bad. Yeah, because man. you really, it's, it's up to you, I guess. It's up to you, man. And I think Muslims, they really do have to, and like, I don't understand why we're so upset. Like, if they ask me, like, why are you... What, what do you guys think about the cartoonists and all that? So listen, man, you know they used to put camel manure on the prophet's back while he made salat? Do you think I'm worried about somebody writing a cartoon that I have to be, yeah, so angry and upset? Like, no, we're going to pray for these people because they don't know any better. And the prophet, sallallahu alayhi man, he prayed for people just like Prophet Isa or Jesus. He used to pray for when he seen them doing bad and most evilest things, he prayed for them. And that's hard to do when the somebody, you know what I mean, they kill your family and you pray for them. He doesn't got to forgive them. They're nailing you to a, a boards and then you pray for them. Like, wow, these are special people. Strong. But this is what we learn that you care for people because you know that they don't know what you know. Of course. Yeah. And you know that, wow, I want them to know if they knew they wouldn't do this to me. Ouch, it hurts. You and know. it's like that. And, it, and it, that's, that's the example of the prophets. Man. Yeah. These are amazing people. We have to be more like that. You know, we have to understand that these people, they don't know what you know. True. They only have been programmed to think a certain way. And this is all from Shaitan because Shaitan doesn't want good for people in general. He doesn't want that. He wants the, 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 this, all of the politics around the world, Australia, America, and the UK, everybody wants to use fear tactics in order to gain political power. It's just the history. Of, it, it, so, so you got to have a bad guy. And who's the bad guy today? Oh, Muslims! <laughs> yeah. In saying that, <laughs> that reminds me of the new movie that you've got out right now. Oh, thank you, sir. I'm happy that it's reminding you of that. The Halaliwood! 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 I'm excited because we saw that. I'm happy that you saw and, it. And do you know it was a movie that prior to seeing it, yes. there was people of two directions. <laughs> I, you know what I mean? Yeah, man. Because people were saying that this is, you know, you've got the Muslims on this side saying, how can they put a movie like this? You know, this is just not right. And on the other end, the non-Muslims saying, what? Sharia? What are these guys trying to do? So they were like, really, there was two different extreme sides to it. Yes. And I have to say, when I saw the movie, it was none of the two. <laughs> I'm so It was great. none of the two. And it's just like what you're saying. It's really bringing reality back to people. Yeah. And what touched me the most as well, that you actually said, 
90% of this action movie is based on real story. Yes. That's just amazing. You know, like, and how can you really mis mistake that? But I guess, you know, that's just people. But I, I encourage people to actually see that movie because it's great. really, really um, inspiring, I guess. And it's really suitable for both ends, you know, Muslims and non-Muslims, which is really good. It's really showing you the real picture. Man, I'm really grateful to that. Alhamdulillah, it's, it's really humbling. I, I have to, I'll come to their defense <laughs> because I learned this from the prophets. Because so many people, they said so many bad things about me. They called me kafir. They, they said that I should be hung in public and, <laughs> and, and killed and beat and for mocking Islam. And they have never seen the movie. They say he's haram and all that. They say, and they, they say, oh, my movie. They, they never seen it. They saw a two and a half minute, Minutes, three minute right trailer of the movie. And then they come to the conclusion, which unfortunately, for anybody who's smart, they will show they're misrepresenting Islam, misrepresenting the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam in their effort to stand up for Islam. Like I tell the youth and I tell young brothers, anybody who's yelling at you, screaming, Quran and Sunnah, Quran and Sunnah, is automatically not following Quran and Sunnah. Because you would never find the Prophet Sallallahu speaking to anyone that way. And so when the Prophet Sallallahu was upset, you could see it on his face. But he was quiet, for he spoke good or he didn't say anything. He would leave in the example of uh, Abu Bakr and him when the man was yelling and, 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 and calling, cursing him and stuff. When Abu Bakr starts defending himself, then the prophet got up and he left. He was smiling at first, then he, then he left. So well, I wanted to remind people that this is not the adab, this is not the manners. If you see something, what Allah tell you to do? He asked in the Quran, he says, why don't you go and seek the truth of this matter before jumping to conclusions? True. And unfortunately, right. these um, I'm gonna say it. Can I say it? These so-called scholars, <laughs> because they're not scholars. You had to say, it, didn't you? I had to say <laughs> it. I'm sorry. I had to be truthful. <laughs> these so-called scholars or respected leaders inside of our community really are making a grave mistake by doing this, and they turn off the youth. And this is their. They have if they want to represent the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, then they have to control their emotions, because they're just emotional, and then they will, I want to stand up for Islam, stand up for Islam, and then you misrepresent Islam. But, yeah. in their defense. So there's, the, okay. All right, in their <laughs> defense, because I care and I love them regardless, because I pray that if they're sincere and they really was want to stand up for Islam, they may have really been honest in thinking that I was misrepresenting Islam, but I'm grateful to tell them, alhamdulillah, no, Yani, I was not. Um, I cut the trailer in a way where it would be um, entertaining or alluring or attract people of other faith so that they would be interested to watch the film. And in me doing that, honestly, I, it's my fault because I took Muslims for granted because I automatically thought that the Muslims was going to get it like they're going to know they're going to get it. all. Their, and I, I'm shocked that they didn't get it. <laughs> like, are you serious? You guys really, you didn't get it, subhanAllah. And I'm grateful for the ones who did get it, like Iksa and you guys, Human Appeal. SubhanAllah, man, you guys touch me. You give me like a exactly. big hug because majority of Australia was skeptical. And in all Muslims, I understand, will be skeptical of something like a halal movie made in a, halal, in a Hollywood way. That's and right. rightfully so. So I have to take the bitter with the sweet, and I understand, alhamdulillah. And now I'm just grateful that some of the scholars now, some of the leaders are contacting me, asking if they can have a preview of the film before they will put their name and stand behind it. And that, to me, is humbling and is very respectful. It's because great. in the beginning, they all just jumped to the conclusion, subhanAllah. But because of people like you, Iksal, like and a human appeal, like here, man, alhamdulillah. Like what you said. We had I a felt trust like in that right there. Did you do it again? Oh. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> like what you said, we had faith because we obviously seen you before and we met you before, previously when you came in the first trip to Australia, and there was no way that we could think, oh brother, I'm a Regan, would do anything that would be misrepresenting Islam. Alhamdulillah. And after watching that movie, I honestly have to say it was very touching to a lot of people, and. By the way, when he said 90% of that story is from real story, that real actual life, um, really story of what actually happens out there. Yes. 
And most importantly, there is a story of you, even your dad, which I don't even want to bring that back, but there is a touching story that's in the memory of your dad, yes. where he was kind of a victim of that as well. Yes, a lot of this uh, had to do with my father, alhamdulillah, and the incidents surrounding my father was because they targeted him with the Islamophobia, and um, they, they killed him. The government, the U.S. government, uh, the FBI, they killed my father. They, um, they portrayed him to be a terrorist or somebody who wanted to establish Sharia in America. And then they lured him with these informants who act like they were Muslims. And then they shot him 20 times. And then they told a whole bunch of lies on the news and the television. And then we continued to fight with the lawyers, alhamdulillah. And then they, um, they apologized to me and the family. We're sorry. <laughs> My father's gone now, you guys. You're sorry. No, he wasn't a terrorist. But they didn't go back on the news. And they didn't say, oh, Imam Luqman, I mean, Abdullah was not a terrorist. They didn't do any of that. They just told me and the family that we're sorry. And now, I mean, at the end of the day, my father's gone. So now I said, alhamdulillah, what can I do to make this change? Because now anytime they can say sharia or jihad, or, and they don't know what it is. You know, they can say these things and then people get afraid and they're scared. And, you know, and uh, it's like, oh, please stop them because we want peace and we want safe. And we're like, well, Muslims is your next door neighbors, guys. They want peace and safety, too. Of course. You know, but is it who's the real terrorist? If my father is not terrorizing anybody, but yet you guys set him up and you shoot him 20 times, who's terrified? Because you guys, they have the resources to do that. Meanwhile, my father never killed anybody. My father never had a gun, never had the bomb, you know. So what? they made all of these stories up. They scared everybody, and then they didn't recant it. So I wanted to tell a story of how we can not anything hate. Because another thing that I, want, that I put in the film, by the permission of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, was that this whole idea that Muslims is fighting with Christians and Jews, we are not. Islam does not fight with Christians and Jews, man. You know what I mean? The Prophet Sallallahu wasn't Prophet. fighting with Christians and Jews. The, the Quraysh, they wasn't Christian or Jew. They were like idolaters yeah. who wanted to continue to sell gods and trade. And when the Prophet came and said only one God, then it was going to mess up the economy. They were like, hey, if Muhammad uses this dude, we make a lot of money with these gods and we trade gods with all of the caravans that's coming. If you come and say one God, how is everybody going to buy one God? They didn't understand it. So they offered him the key to Mecca. They said, like, we'll give you the key to the city. Well, you know, well, everything. everything, just don't cut off the economy. Everything was based upon the same thing today as political power. <clears throat> and as you can see, I mean, it's, it's sad that that's, it's all about power and it's all about control. And today they're doing the same thing. If Islam grows, then they automatically think that it's going to cut off their power. Their, you know what I mean? Because they use this to control people. And they mix religion up with all of these different ideas so that they can pass laws. And you know what I mean? They do, and it's, it's really unfortunate, but those are the times that we're living in. And unfortunately, Ali, people are not reading People are not studying. Muslims are not reading. Half the time, Ali, honestly, Muslims don't know what Sharia is. <laughs> you know what I mean? Half the time, Muslims don't know what jihad is. They're programmed too. They think jihad means fight war. Jihad doesn't. It doesn't mean fight war. It means it's just a challenge. You're a struggle. This is a struggle in life. And the greatest struggle is within yourself. And that's against ego, against I mean, emotion. Of course. Uh, yeah, get self-control, self-control, not controlling other people. That's jihad. And that's why you've got Halaliwood. Mm. When we saw the movie, it actually portrays the real image of what actually the Muslims face out there. Because I guess a lot of people, they're kind of in their own square, they're all in their own box kind of thing. They're saying like, look, as long as nothing is happening to me, I'm okay. Mm. But on the other hand, on the other side, you've got many Muslims that face heavy challenges especially all sisters which you've mentioned in this yes. because they pretty much the face of islam wearing the hijab there you go there is one there is one there is one yes and they're the one that face a challenge and putting in this through i guess this is a real eye opener for people to really see the image and to really kind of like what you said the response to that is it needs to be positive it's not a hate response it's, it's a positive hate. response yeah. we're basically saying look you have to realize we're just like you. Just like we're you. human beings just like you. 
Oh, sing it, Ollie. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> so, just like you. See what happens when I hang out with you for a day? I know, I know. I know. Oh, man, it's good. This is going to carry us on to when we break our fast. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Probably they've broken them by now. Did you guys break the fast? I reckon they've broken them by now. Mashallah. They can't wait this long. I know. They're hungry. Hungry. Thirsty. <laughs> Keep swallowing. <laughs> Jazakallah. <laughs> Look, talking with you is great. And we can go on and go on and go on and go on. Yes. But I have to say, I, I, I put my hand up to American Sharia movie. Oh, how and it's that? really, 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 don't judge by the trailer. I really? Mean, you know what? I, I may have to cut a new trailer. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> Subhanallah, I didn't know that the trailer was going to cause this much trouble. <laughs> like, really? I was no, like, for our side, For our side, we have to... Be positive, and the way we look at it, and we're giving you that message now for people that have seen the movie. Alhamdulillah. It's really, really beneficial, and I advise everybody to see it. Inshallah, now that you've been here and you're gonna go, and if you've missed American Sharia, you have to wait for the movie to come out. I know you have to wait a long time because Subhanallah, our goal is to build it. Like we really want to have an established Halaliwood to be just as big as Bollywood, and. And what it is, is just, we have so many different Muslim stories. True. And we're not represented in the media. You know, we're not. The, in every movie, Muslims are associated with terrorism and they kill us in the movies. And yeah. Can you imagine what I, your I, children I, I, I don't, don't want to say what we're going to do in that. <laughs> because it's not about that. We're not like that. Yeah, we, we're not, no, we're, I, <laughs> I know. What do we, we, we don't know anything about terrorism. We, we have no idea. Man, we're too busy with cameras and doing, you guys, Human Appeal is doing amazing work and feeding work. people. And, so it's so messed up that that doesn't get highlighted on the media at all. The only thing is they pick these little groups. It's small. <laughs> they pick some little angry people who are angry, like, and anybody who claim to be a Muslim, but they are angry, it's almost like this, Ali, let me say this on this Ramadan TV. You know what? They, they uh, associate Islam with terrorism, right? But why? Do you guys know about this KKK over here? In the Ku Klux Klan? Yeah, we've In the history of America, right? You know what they were doing? They were hanging and killing black people just because they were black in the name of Jesus Christ, in the name of the Lord. Nobody never called them a terrorist, but they had their Christian crosses and they had the, the, the Bible and it was burning, burn you, burn you. And they were killing innocent people. That's right. That, that is not terrorism. What happened? I don't understand. So, what, we, what we can hope for what is we, what, that, what can we hope for? Al for Halaliwood Halali to work really, really hard yes. and to really bring out some really good quality Products, movies, yes, alhamdulillah. Documentaries, something, bring out things that we can actually really, really be proud of. No, be proud of life, the American Sharia. Yeah, I'm, I'm happy to, man. So look for it, man. Alhamdulillah, inshallah, we have halal romantic comedy. Yeah, <laughs> Muslims love, man. We love, man. We have beautiful story, like my good friend, man. Beautiful relationship, beautiful stories, and they produce beautiful families. And, and we have cartoon movies, Ali, which is great. Yeah, we, we all of these are in the works. Yes, we want to have our cartoon, uh, cartoon movie. We have action movie. We have drama. So right. our goal is this next film. I want to tell everybody about. How they not give you a little introduction of it? It's called Faithful Neighbors. It's based upon uh, this ayat in the Quran where Allah says. Uh, he cursed the people who make salat for waylon and musalli, right? But they forget small kindness and neighborly needs. They forget their manners. And so we're back to that. Like we have neighbors. It's a Muslim, Christian, Jewish neighbor, right? And they can't stand each other until a devil worshiper moves on the block. And now they are forced to come together to get a better understanding, to respect each other. Because among Christians, Jews, Muslims, it's the same message. One God, be good to yourselves, be good to everybody else, care about each other. And somehow we lost that. It's the same message. So I'm going to get Great. back to the same message. One Great. guy and be good to each other. So look for Faithful Neighbors, inshallah, to be the next film Great. to come out of Halaliwood. Inshallah. And we look for it and we thank you, uh, we thank you, Ali, for your support. Alhamdulillah. We thank Ramadan TV. Alhamdulillah. May Allah accept all of our fasts. Amin, 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 Amin. Yes, Amin. Alhamdulillah. And I'm your brother, Omar Regan. Alhamdulillah. Follow me on the Instagram and the Twitter um, at Omar Regan, um, O M A R R E G A N, Halaliwood. And Alhamdulillah. Shukran to 
Human Appeal and all exactly the work that you guys doing. And I'm looking forward to joining Human Appeal on one of their beautiful excursions. So, alhamdulillah, inshallah, Allah bless us to be able to put Amen. it together. Amen. Yes, and we'll raise some more funds, inshallah. Inshallah, we're there. Yeah, we're there. Man. We have to do it. We're going to do it together, inshallah. And thank you to IXA, man, the exactly Islamic exactly. Information exactly. Center of South Australia, man. Alhamdulillah, the exactly. beautiful exactly. people, man. Alhamdulillah. Omar, before you go, I'm going to ask you, you something. Do you want me to, before want, we go? Before we go, we're going to ask you something because when, when you were doing the stand up yes. for the movie, yes. You were kind of, you had, you had a really nice system in place. Uh -huh. Now we have the youth. The youth, you know, you've got the youth that loves different types of music yeah. and haram, haram mm. things. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> haram things. Yes, yes. So you had, I love the way you put it. You said how, you, you gave them kind of like a, a solution for how to turn haram halal oh, kind of thing. Man. What is that? Tell us about, well, tell us a little bit about that. <laughs> The halal company, يعني, 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 يعني. <laughs> No, you know, I know that the youth, alhamdulillah, I'm affected just like them. Good. So I hear things just like you do. And sometimes I said, subhanAllah, like I heard this song and it was like all over YouTube and all over it was big and it was just in my head and I found myself repeating it. And then I thought, oh, oh no, the angels is writing this down on my hisab. No! So I said, you know what? The rhythm wouldn't leave my head, so I had to convert the song. So I give the, the song Shahada. Oof, okay. I know. I know. Well, tell us about and it. So, and so <laughs> now, now, it made me think, like, what if, subhanAllah, what like, if? What if I was able to give all of these songs Shahada? The, what if the, the artist was, was Muslim? I mean, he had Shahada, like 50 Cent. How would he do it? How would he turn his what track? What would this song be? If he was Muslim. If 50 Cent was Muslim. Huh? Let's hear it. Do you have it? I take you to the masjid. Fun, 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 fun. <laughs> yeah. I teach you to make a lot. Fun, 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 fun. That's crazy. Pay zakat. Right. Or like, what if Justin Bieber was Muslim? I don't even know who that is. But that's what you think. You don't know the Bieber? <laughs> that's not the Bieber. Is. Wow, Allah bless, protected you from the Bieber fever. <laughs> he doesn't know. But imagine. All right, let's right. imagine. Just, just I'm sure a lot of people know Bieber. They know. But what would his song be? Tell us. Say, All I need. Is this fun as my thing? It'll make my life complete. That's great. And man. then Nicki Minaj, she'll be a niqab. Okay. And she'll be like, believer, believer. All you want to be is a believer. Okay, all right. <laughs> <laughs> That's great. That's great. This is what we call a conversion. A conversion. From haram to halal. Mm -hmm. MashaAllah. MashaAllah. We can do this. We can do this. Without even them knowing. I they don't do even know. That's great. That's great. As I said, it's it's great to have you here, and it's it's great to have this conversation with you. And I'm sure everybody enjoyed your company because I sure did. And I hope to have you in this studio again yes. soon. Jazakallah khair, and inshallah see you soon. Yes, inshallah see you soon. Assalamu alaikum. This is Omar Regan, alhamdulillah, and my good friend Ali, and you're watching Ramadan TV. Salams.